Welcome to the channel for you. World War I World War I or the First World War, often abbreviated as World War I or WW1, was a global war originating in Europe that lasted from 28 July 1914 to the 11th of November 1918. Contemporaneously known as the Great War or, the War to End All Wars, it led to the mobilization of more than 70 million military personnel, including 60 million Europeans, making it one of the largest wars in history. It is also one of the deadliest conflicts in history, with an estimated 9 million combatant deaths and 13 million civilian deaths as a direct result of the war, while resulting genocides and the related 1918 Spanish flu pandemic caused another 17 to 100 million deaths worldwide, including an estimated 2.64 million Spanish flu deaths in Europe and as many as 675,000 Spanish flu deaths in the United States. On 28 June 1914, Gavrilo Princip, a Bosnian Serb Yugoslav nationalist, assassinated the Austro Hungarian heir Archduke Franz Ferdinand in Sarajevo, leading to the July Crisis. In response, Austria Hungary issued an ultimatum to Serbia on 23 July. Serbia's reply failed to satisfy the Austrians, and the two moved to a war footing. A network of interlocking alliances enlarged the crisis from a bilateral issue in the Balkans to one involving most of Europe. By July 1914, the great powers of Europe were divided into two coalitions, the Triple Entente, consisting of France, Russia, and Britain, and the Triple Alliance of Germany, Austria-Hungary, and Italy. The Triple Alliance was only defensive in nature, allowing Italy to stay out of the war until April 1915, when it joined the Allied powers after its relations with Austria-Hungary deteriorated. Russia felt it necessary to back Serbia, and approved partial mobilization after Austria-Hungary shelled the Serbian capital of Belgrade, which was a few miles from the border, on 28 July. Full Russian mobilization was announced on the evening of 30 July. The following day, Austria-Hungary and Germany did the same, while Germany demanded Russia demobilize within 12 hours. When Russia failed to comply, Germany declared war on Russia on 1 August in support of Austria-Hungary, the latter following suit on 6 August. France ordered full mobilization in support of Russia on 2 August. Germany's strategy for a war on two fronts against France and Russia was to rapidly concentrate the bulk of its army in the west to defeat France within six weeks, then shift forces to the east before Russia could fully mobilize, this was later known as the Schlieffen Plan. On 2 August, Germany demanded free passage through Belgium, an essential element in achieving a quick victory over France. When this was refused, German forces invaded Belgium on 3 August and declared war on France the same day. The Belgian government invoked the 1839 Treaty of London and, in compliance with its obligations under this treaty, Britain declared war on Germany on 4 August. On 12 August, Britain and France also declared war on Austria-Hungary, on 23 August, Japan sided with Britain, seizing German possessions in China and the Pacific. In November 1914, the Ottoman Empire entered the war on the side of Austria-Hungary and Germany, opening fronts in the Caucasus, Mesopotamia, and the Sinai Peninsula. The war was fought in and drew upon each power's colonial empire also, spreading the conflict to Africa and across the globe. The Entente and its allies eventually became known as the Allied Powers, while the grouping of Austria-Hungary, Germany and their allies became known as the Central Powers. The German advance into France was halted at the Battle of the Marne and by the end of 1914, the Western Front settled into a war of attrition, marked by a long series of trench lines that changed little until 1917. The Eastern Front, by contrast, was marked by much greater exchanges of territory, in 1915, Italy joined the Allied powers and opened a front in the Alps. Bulgaria joined the Central Powers in 1915 and Greece joined the Allies in 1917, expanding the war in the Balkans. The United States initially remained neutral, 
Though even while neutral it became an important supplier of war materiel to the Allies. Eventually, after the sinking of American merchant ships by German submarines, the declaration by Germany that its navy would resume unrestricted attacks on neutral shipping, and the revelation that Germany was trying to incite Mexico to initiate war against the United States, the U.S. declared war on Germany on 6 April 1917. Trained American forces did not begin arriving at the front in large numbers until mid-1918, but the American Expeditionary Force ultimately reached some 2 million troops. Though Serbia was defeated in 1915, and Romania joined the Allied powers in 1916 only to be defeated in 1917, none of the great powers were knocked out of the war until 1918. The 1917 February Revolution in Russia replaced the monarchy with the provisional government, but continuing discontent with the cost of the war led to the October Revolution, the creation of the Soviet Socialist Republic, and the signing of the Treaty of Brest-Litovsk by the new government in March 1918, ending Russia's involvement in the war. Germany now controlled much of Eastern Europe and transferred large numbers of combat troops to the Western Front. Using new tactics, the German March 1918 offensive was initially successful. The Allies fell back and held. The last of the German reserves were exhausted as 10,000 fresh American troops arrived every day. The Allies drove the Germans back in their Hundred Days Offensive, a continual series of attacks to which the Germans had no reply. One by one the Central Powers quit. First Bulgaria, September 29, then the Ottoman Empire, October 31, and the Austro-Hungarian Empire, November 3. With its allies defeated, revolution at home, and the military no longer willing to fight, Kaiser Wilhelm abdicated on 9 November and Germany signed an armistice on of November 1918, ending the war. World War I was a significant turning point in the political, cultural, economic, and social climate of the world. The war and its immediate aftermath sparked numerous revolutions and uprisings. The Big Four Britain, France, the United States, and Italy imposed their terms on the defeated powers in a series of treaties agreed at the 1919 Paris Peace Conference, the most well known being the German Peace Treaty, the Treaty of Versailles. Ultimately, as a result of the war, the Austro Hungarian, German, Ottoman, and Russian empires ceased to exist, and numerous new states were created from their remains. However, despite the conclusive Allied victory and the creation of the League of Nations during the peace conference, intended to prevent future wars a second world war followed just over 20 years later names the term, World War, was first used in September 1914 by German biologist and philosopher Ernst Haeckel, who claimed that, there is no doubt that the course and character of the feared, European war, will become the First World War in the full sense of the word, citing a wire service report in the Indianapolis Star on 20 September 1914. Prior to World War II, the events of 1914-1918 were generally known as the Great War or simply the World War. In October 1914, the Canadian magazine Maclean's wrote, some wars name themselves. This is the Great War. Contemporary Europeans also referred to it as, the war to end war, or, the war to end all wars, due to their perception of its then unparalleled scale and devastation. After World War II began in 1939, the terms became more standard, with British Empire historians, including Canadians, favoring, the First World War, and Americans, World War I. Background. Political and Military Alliances. For much of the 19th century, the major European powers had tried to maintain a tenuous balance of power among themselves, resulting in a complex network of political and military alliances. The biggest challenges to this were Britain's withdrawal into so-called splendid isolation, the decline of the Ottoman Empire and the post-1848 rise of Prussia under Otto von Bismarck. Victory in the 1866 Austro-Prussian War established Prussian hegemony in Germany, while victory over France in the 1870–1871 Franco-Prussian War unified the German states into a German Reich under Prussian leadership. French desire for revenge over the defeat of 1871, known as revanchism, and the recovery of Alsace-Lorraine became a principal object of French policy for the next 40 years see French-German enmity. In 1873, to isolate France and avoid a war on two fronts, Bismarck negotiated the League of the Three Emperors German, between Austria-Hungary, Russia and Germany. 
Concerned by Russia's victory in the 1877-1878 Russo-Turkish War and its influence in the Balkans, the League was dissolved in 1878, with Germany and Austria-Hungary subsequently forming the 1879 Dual Alliance. This became the Triple Alliance when Italy joined in 1882. The practical details of these alliances were limited, since their primary purpose was to ensure cooperation between the three imperial powers, and to isolate France. Attempts by Britain in 1880 to resolve colonial tensions with Russia and diplomatic moves by France led to Bismarck reforming the League in 1881. When the League finally lapsed in 1887, it was replaced by the Reinsurance Treaty, a secret agreement between Germany and Russia to remain neutral if either were attacked by France or Austria-Hungary. In 1890, the new German Emperor, Kaiser Wilhelm II, forced Bismarck to retire and was persuaded not to renew the reinsurance treaty by the new chancellor, Leo von Caprivi. This allowed France to counteract the Triple Alliance with the Franco-Russian Alliance of 1894 and the 1904 Entente Cordiale with Britain, while in 1907 Britain and Russia signed the Anglo-Russian Convention. The agreements did not constitute formal alliances, but by settling long-standing colonial disputes, they made British entry into any future conflict involving France or Russia a possibility. These interlocking bilateral agreements became known as the Triple Entente, British backing of France against Germany during the Second Moroccan Crisis in 1911 reinforced the Entente between the two countries, and with Russia as well, and increased Anglo-German estrangement, deepening the divisions that would erupt in 1914. Arms race. The creation of the German Reich following victory in the 1871 Franco-Prussian War led to a massive increase in Germany's economic and industrial strength. Admiral Alfred von Tirpitz and Wilhelm II, who became emperor in 1890, sought to use this to create a Kaiserliche Marine or Imperial German Navy to compete with Britain's Royal Navy for world naval supremacy. In doing so, he was influenced by U.S. naval strategist Alfred Mayen, who argued possession of a Blue Water Navy was vital for global power projection. Tirpitz translated his books into German, and Wilhelm made them required reading. However, it was also driven by Wilhelm's admiration of the Royal Navy and desire to outdo it. This resulted in the Anglo-German naval arms race. Yet the launch of HMS Dreadnought in 1906 gave the Royal Navy a technological advantage over its German rival, which they never lost. Ultimately, the race diverted huge resources to creating a German navy large enough to antagonize Britain, but not defeat it. In 1911, Chancellor Theobald von Bethmann Holweg acknowledged defeat, leading to the Rüstungswende or armaments turning point when Germany switched expenditure from the navy to the army. This was driven by Russia's recovery from the 1905 revolution, specifically increased investment post-1908 in railways and infrastructure in its western border regions. Germany and Austria-Hungary relied on faster mobilization to compensate for fewer numbers, it was concern at the closing of this gap that led to the end of the naval race, rather than a reduction in tension elsewhere. When Germany expanded its standing army by 170,000 men in 1913, France extended compulsory military service from two to three years. Similar measures taken by the Balkan powers and Italy, which led to increased expenditure by the Ottomans and Austria-Hungary. Absolute figures are hard to calculate, due to differences in categorizing expenditure, while they often omit civilian infrastructure projects with a military use, such as railways. However, from 1908 to 1913, defense spending by the six major European powers increased by over 50% in real terms. Conflicts in the Balkans In October 1908, Austria-Hungary precipitated the Bosnian Crisis of 1908-1909 by officially annexing the former Ottoman territory of Bosnia and Herzegovina, which it had occupied since 1878. This angered the Kingdom of Serbia and its patron, the Pan-Slavic and Orthodox Russian Empire. The Balkans came to be known as the Powder Keg of Europe. The Italo-Turkish War in the 1911-1912 was a significant precursor of the World War I as it sparked nationalism in the Balkan states and paved the way for the Balkan Wars. In 1912 and 1913, the First Balkan War was fought between the Balkan League and the fracturing Ottoman Empire. The resulting Treaty of London further shrank the Ottoman Empire, 
creating an independent Albanian state while enlarging the territorial holdings of Bulgaria, Serbia, Montenegro, and Greece. When Bulgaria attacked Serbia and Greece on 16 June 1913, it sparked the 33-day Second Balkan War, by the end of which it lost most of Macedonia to Serbia and Greece, and southern Dobruja to Romania, further destabilizing the region. The great powers were able to keep these Balkan conflicts contained, but the next one would spread throughout Europe and beyond. Prelude. Sarajevo Assassination. On 28 June 1914, Archduke Franz Ferdinand, heir presumptive to the Austro-Hungarian Empire, visited the Bosnian capital, Sarajevo. A group of six assassins Sivijetko Popovic, Gavrilo Princip, Mohamed Mehmed Basic, Nedelko Kabrinovic, Trifko Grabas, and Vazo Kubrilovic, from the Yugoslavist group Milada Bosna, who had been supplied with arms by the Serbian Black Hand, gathered on the street where the Archduke's motorcade was to pass, with the intention of assassinating him. The political objective of the assassination was to break off Austria-Hungary's South Slav provinces, which Austria-Hungary had annexed from the Ottoman Empire, so they could be combined into a Yugoslavia. Kabrinovic threw a grenade at the car but missed. Some nearby were injured by the blast, but Ferdinand's convoy carried on. The other assassins failed to act as the cars drove past them. About an hour later, when Ferdinand was returning from a visit at the Sarajevo hospital with those wounded in the assassination attempt, the convoy took a wrong turn into a street where, by coincidence, Princip stood. With a pistol, Princip shot and killed Ferdinand and his wife Sophie. Although they were reportedly not personally close, the Emperor Franz Joseph was profoundly shocked and upset. The reaction among the people in Austria, however, was mild, almost indifferent. As historian Zabinik Seaman later wrote, the event almost failed to make any impression whatsoever. On Sunday and Monday, 28 and 29 June, the crowds in Vienna listened to music and drank wine, as if nothing had happened. Nevertheless, the political effect of the murder of the heir to the throne was significant, and was described by historian Christopher Clark on the BBC Radio 4 series Month of Madness as a 9 11th effect, a terrorist event charged with historic meaning, transforming the political chemistry in Vienna. Expansion of violence in Bosnia and Herzegovina. The Austro-Hungarian authorities encouraged the subsequent anti-Serb riots in Sarajevo, in which Bosnian Croats and Bosniaks killed two Bosnian Serbs and damaged numerous Serb-owned buildings. Violent actions against ethnic Serbs were also organized outside Sarajevo, in other cities in Austro-Hungarian controlled Bosnia and Herzegovina, Croatia and Slovenia. Austro-Hungarian authorities in Bosnia and Herzegovina imprisoned and extradited approximately 5,500 prominent Serbs, 700 to 2,200 of whom died in prison. A further 460 Serbs were sentenced to death. A predominantly Bosniak special militia known as the Schutzkorps was established and carried out the persecution of Serbs July crisis. The assassination led to a month of diplomatic maneuvering between Austria-Hungary, Germany, Russia, France and Britain, called the July Crisis. Austria-Hungary correctly believed that Serbian officials, especially the officers of the Black Hand, had been involved in the plot to murder the Archduke, and wanted to finally end Serbian interference in Bosnia. However, the Austrian-Hungarian Foreign Ministry had no proof of Serbian involvement, and a dossier that it belatedly compiled to make its case against Serbia was riddled with errors. On 23 July, Austria-Hungary delivered to Serbia the July Ultimatum, a series of ten demands that were made intentionally unacceptable, in an effort to provoke a war with Serbia. Serbia decreed general mobilization on 25 July. Serbia accepted all the terms of the ultimatum except for Articles 5 and 6, which demanded that Austrian-Hungarian representatives be allowed to assist in suppressing subversive elements inside Serbia's borders and to participate in the investigation and trial of Serbians linked to the assassination. Following this, Austria broke off diplomatic relations with Serbia and, the next day, ordered a partial mobilization. Finally, on 28 July 1914, a month after the assassination, Austria-Hungary declared war on Serbia. On 25 July, Russia, in support of Serbia, declared partial mobilization against Austria-Hungary. On 30 July, Russia ordered general mobilization. 
German Chancellor Bethmann Hollweg waited until the 31st for an appropriate response, when Germany declared Erklärung des Kriegszustandes, or, Statement on the War Status. Kaiser Wilhelm II asked his cousin, Tsar Nicholas II, to suspend the Russian general mobilization. When he refused, Germany issued an ultimatum demanding its mobilization be stopped, and a commitment not to support Serbia. Another was sent to France, asking her not to support Russia if it were to come to the defense of Serbia. On 1 August, after the Russian response, Germany mobilized and declared war on Russia. This also led to the general mobilization in Austria-Hungary on 4 August. The German government issued demands to France that it remain neutral whilst they decided which deployment plan to implement, it being extremely difficult to change the deployment once it was underway. The modified German Schlieffen plan, Offmarsch to West, would deploy 80% of the army in the West, while Offmarsch I Ost and Offmarsch to Ost would deploy 60% in the West and 40% in the East. The French did not respond, but sent a mixed message by ordering their troops to withdraw 10 kilometers 6 miles from the border to avoid any incidents, and at the same time ordered the mobilization of their reserves. Germany responded by mobilizing its own reserves and implementing Offmarsch to West. The British cabinet decided on 29 July that being a signatory to the 1839 treaty about Belgium did not oblige it to oppose a German invasion of Belgium with military force. On 1 August, Wilhelm ordered General Helmuth von Moltke the Younger to march the whole of the army to the east, after being informed that Britain would remain neutral if France was not attacked and, possibly, that her hands might, in any case, be stayed by crisis in Ireland. Moltke told the Kaiser that attempting to redeploy a million men was unthinkable, and that making it possible for the French to attack the Germans, in the rear, would prove disastrous. Yet Wilhelm insisted that the German army should not march into Luxembourg until he received a telegram sent by his cousin George V, who made it clear that there had been a misunderstanding. Eventually the Kaiser told Moltke, now you can do what you. Cheering crowds in London and Paris on the day war was declared. For years, the French had been aware of intelligence indicating that Germany planned to attack France through Belgium. General Joseph Joffrey, chief of staff of the French military from 1911, inquired about the possibility of moving some French troops into Belgium to preempt such a move by Germany, but France's civilian leadership rejected this idea. Joffrey was told that France would not be the first power to violate Belgian neutrality and that any French move into Belgium could come only after the Germans had already invaded. On 2 August, Germany occupied Luxembourg, and on 3 August declared war on France. On the same day, they sent the Belgian government an ultimatum demanding unimpeded right-of-way through any part of Belgium, which was refused. Early on the morning of 4 August, the Germans invaded. King Albert ordered his military to resist and called for assistance under the 1839 Treaty of London. Britain demanded Germany comply with the treaty and respect Belgian neutrality, it declared war on Germany at 1900 Coordinated Universal Time on 4 August 1914, effective from 2300, following an unsatisfactory reply. Progress of the war. Opening hostilities confusion among the Central Powers The strategy of the Central Powers suffered from miscommunication. Germany had promised to support Austria-Hungary's invasion of Serbia, but interpretations of what this meant differed. Previously tested deployment plans had been replaced early in 1914, but those had never been tested in exercises. Austro-Hungarian leaders believed Germany would cover its northern flank against Russia. Germany, however, envisioned Austria-Hungary directing most of its troops against Russia, while Germany dealt with France. This confusion forced the Austro-Hungarian army to divide its forces between the Russian and Serbian fronts. 